I'm Peter Postman, director for Filmlight in the Americas, and we're at NAB 2019 at the Filmlight booth. Filmlight is all about creative color correction and providing the most powerful creative grading tools to the filmmaking community. So we have pre-light, which is for live onset grading, daylight, which is for grading dailies and producing all your deliverables and managing all the metadata that gets collected on set as a part of dailies. And all that feeds into the base light color finishing system. And we also have base light for Avid, base light for Nuke, and for Flame, so that you can apply those same color grades just as metadata throughout your entire workflow. At the show this year, we're highlighting a lot of workflow tools for base light finishing specifically. Uh, new conform tools like multi-directory conform and three-point editing. Lots of tools for managing your grading stack, like being able to compress your layers and manage your cache on a per scene basis. We're also showing off some new hardware. We're bringing back the design of our original Blackboard control panel called the Blackboard Classic for people who like the, the form factor of that panel or need a more cost-effective alternative to the Blackboard 2. So the Blackboard 2 is still our premier control panel and we have the smaller slate control panel if you need something more portable or smaller and the Blackboard Classic fits uh, right in the middle in between them. And then we're also showing off a new base light API which allows you to do a lot more automation in a facility to manage your media, manage your scenes, all, all fully scriptable in Python or Java. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm showing you our um, texture tool set that uh, gives colorists a lot of interesting possibilities to work on the texture and sharpness of images. Based on feedback from colorists doing a lot of HDR projects, we made a new tool called Texture Highlight that's really adding a nice a touch to the highlights and avoiding these disturbing, overly sharp um, highlights that are, um, very po uh, that are seen often with HDR. Currently, the highlights of that frame are very much um, clipped. With our tool, we're bringing back a nice modulation there, and also uh, visually it looks pleasing. We can also do something for the shadows, to build something comparable to a Black Promised filter that's also compressing the noise uh, a lot in the shadows without doing any, any artifacts, and gives a really nice uh, creamy look in the shadows. Uh, another popular um, use case of our texture blend, blend mode is to manage the texture of the color correcting operations separately. So here we can, by adding a lot of contrast to that face, we also made it maybe a little bit unnaturally crisp and sharp. Also we boost up a little bit of the noise and with the texture blend blend mode we get it back to a much more uh, natural and organic look. As a last example, uh, I have something where we, where a curve grade is introducing a little bit of noise because we, ba we based the luma change on the saturation the texture blend. We can, we can get back um, to a noise-free version of the grade and also we can use it in this example to get rid of magenta and blue fringes. What I'm doing there is I'm just desaturating the blue and the magenta, but I'm not doing it for the whole image because then we would also desaturate the sky. But we're doing it only on the high frequencies. And then, so this is the before, this is the after. Now we can see the, uh, the fringes go away without doing anything disturbing on the rest of the image. Hi, I'm Daniele uh, from Filmlight. I want to show you a little bit of the uh, work on the existing tools. We have uh, reworked on one of the most important parts of a color pipeline, which is the display rendering transform. We, we can now very smoothly interpolate uh, between uh, different viewing conditions uh, seamlessly. So with TKMV1, we had a quite harsh shadow roll of which in some extreme underexposed uh, shots gave the colorist hard time to get colors out of the deep shadows and with TKMV2 we have reworked the shadow handling and the tracking between um, different viewing conditions is also improved. We went even further to improve primary tools or very important tools like keying, HSV keying. Uh, we have reworked the color spaces below the HSV keyer to give a, a much more perceptually uniform experience when you work with the uh, U-angle keyer. For example, if you go to this shot here, if you add the, the U-angle key, the first thing you notice is that on default we are keying the skin tones because the skin tones are the most important subject for the colorist. And if we try to key um, now her white dress in front of that uh, white background, we as humans we can see that there's a slight cast, um, but it, uh, in a tradition it was very uh, difficult to key such a fine nuance. And with the new uh, U-angle keyer, because it works in a perceptually 
uh, uniform space, we can now, uh, with one click, uh, without blurring the mat, get solid uh, keys. We also re reworked um, and did more on, on the look side of things because we found that this is highly important for colorists to bring in preferred color reproduction into um, otherwise quite clean pipelines. Hi, I'm Doug Delaney. I'm senior colorist at Technicolor Los Angeles. I've used a lot of other platforms, but I keep coming back to Baselight as my sort of premier finishing platform. I think we as colorists are no longer simply colorists, but we've become finishers. And Baselight's constantly changing their tool set and growing and evolving their methodologies to help us become just that, finishers. One of the things that we as colorists have to do now is shepherd the creative intent of a film or TV show through increasingly complex deliverables like HDR and Dolby Vision and HDR10 and 10 Plus and whatnot. They're always changing their tool set to help us do that in a creative, efficient way. Hi, I'm Andrea. Uh, I started using Baselight in 2006 and I basically learned to be a colorist on a Baselight. It's probably my favorite thing about using Baselight is that it's really collaborative and allows you to do a lot of different things and work with a lot of different creative leads. Recently I've gotten to Baselight version 5 and I'm using a lot of tools to do with HDR as well as um, the base grade which is one of my favorite new additions to Baselight over the last couple of versions. Uh, and I find that just gives me a lot more control over the image in all different stages and all different deliverables. Mm -hmm.